Today I am filming the 2021 Honda Pilot Touring. As you guys can see, it's right behind me. My tester is painted in this platinum white exterior paint, which looks really good with the chrome, also with the black accents here. But looking at the front fascia here of the Honda Pilot, I do like the way the front fascia looks. It looks bold, it looks aggressive. Looking at these headlights here, they're gonna be a full LED reflector with an automatic low and high beam. There is this LED daytime running light with this incandescent turn signal here, lower part of the fascia. And Honda does throw in these LED fault lights. There is front parking sensors. Also some chrome trim with this black cladding here. Of course, it wouldn't be an SUV without the cladding. Looking at the Honda emblem that does house the dynamic radar cruise control. This does have Honda sensing as standard equipment. But making our way to the side profile here of the Honda Pilot, looking at these tires and rim setup here. These are a 245-50 cross contact sport continental tire i like the gloss black with the silver trim here this is a 20 inch rim design these are one of my favorite uh, rim choices that you can get on the pilot here there's this led sight marker here my tester does offer a standard sunroof honda does not offer a panoramic sunroof here on the pilot there's also these aluminum painted roof rails but making our way to the rear here of the honda pilot looking at these tail lights here they're going to be an led combination with an led brake light with an led reverse light but with an incandescent turn signal just like the front fascia there's your pilot name which is spelled out. There's this Honda emblem there. Also your touring bass to signify what trim level you have. There's this rear spoiler with your shark fin antenna up top. There's also this rear wiper to keep the rear glass clean. Looking at the lower part of the fascia, there's rear parking sensors with some more chrome trim. Also with some aluminum painted trim. I up the cargo back here. My tester is equipped with a power opening tailgate. Looking here, Honda says you get 16.5 cubic feet of space and to fold down, the third row here honda makes it really simple they give you this little scrap here you just pull with one motion once the third row is folded down honda says you get 46.8 cubic feet of space and once you fold everything down you get 83.9 cubic feet of space there is a compartment here for storage there's also a 12 volt back here and underneath here there's going to be some underfloor storage just in case you wanted to hide some items I'm sitting inside the interior of the 2021 Honda Pilot Touring. Looking at this interior, my tester does have this beige interior. It's a two-tone color combination because it does have some black accents here. But shutting the door here of the Pilot, the door sounds pretty solid. But to set up the Pilot, just put your foot on the brake and press the start-stop button over here. My tester has the company's 3.5 liter V6. Honda does not offer a plug-in hybrid or hybrid version of the Pilot here. I wish they would just offer that maybe for the next generation of pilot they might offer a electric five version or a hybrid version here of the pilot but looking at the door panel materials here it's going to be a soft touch ejection mode to plastic there's this black painted trim here with two person memory seats there's this chrome door handle there's your mirror controls here there's eco mode parking sensors four collision warning lane keeping assist your traction control down here is going to be fuel cap opener trunk release there's also your hood latch and then a manual brake there it is automatic up, automatic down for the driver and passenger. Nice scrap handle here. It's going to be padded there to rest your elbows. Additional storage and whatnot. Cup holder down here. The steering wheel is going to be a manual tilt telescoping. Does offer a good amount of range and adjustability. I like that it's leather. My tester also has paddle shifters here to cycle through that nine speed automatic transmission. There are some functions here. This is for the driver's assistance. It does have adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist. On this side is for the volume. You can also cycle through this LCD display up here. Uh, once I start up the car, as you guys see, the gauges did a nice sweep. You can customize the screen here by using this little pad there to show you different things like your units, your settings, maintenance, what's playing now. So if you have your phone connected, which it does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Also your navigation, you can have a display up here. Of course, your RPM and your speed are gonna be up top. Uh, like I mentioned, it does have uh, these paddle shifters here. I do like this wheel design, it looks really nice. Over here is gonna be for the automatic high beam switch and your turn to signal stock. Over here is for the wind wiper stock. My tester does have fault lights, of course, like I showed you guys from the outside scene. This does have this uh, seven inch display or the seven or eight inch display. Like I mentioned, it does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's really fast to touch, it's snappy. Or head to the Google Maps, it takes up the complete screen. Uh, looking here, there will be these soft touch buttons here for the home, back, also the brightness. And there's this volume knob, but I'm surprised to see there's no actual 20 knob here on the Pilot. It's going to have tri-zone climb control. You have your own set of climb controls here. It's going to be three-level heated seats here. I'm surprised to see Honda didn't offer cool seats. You might have to go for the Elite trim, which is the top trim here on the Pilot's portfolio. There's also this Blu-ray player here because my tester 
does have the rear seat entertainment. I'll talk about that once I get into the second row there. Over here is going to be a 12 volt, also a USB port. Over here, is, well, over here is where you can rest your phone. I do have the iPhone 12 Pro Max and it does fit here really nice, but there's just too much cable uh, going in here. So you might want to tuck the cable behind your phone. Over, in the, over here, this is for the uh, nine speed automatic. You put this thing into reverse. I do like the push button style transmission here. You put your foot on the brake, of course, and you pull uh, R as you guys can see. Nice backup camera does have trajectory with rear parking sensors, rear and front parking sensors. There's different angles here that you can look around the vehicle, of course, so you can be really careful if there was kids. This does have a rear cross traffic alert, so this thing will automatically break for you if there was someone behind you or if you're going to hit something. The, the vehicle will basically put the brakes on for you. There's neutral here, also drive, and also there's a sport mode. You click it for S, of course, the thing makes over 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. Put it in the back into park, you press the P button here. There's a snow mode, and also for the automatic start stop so you can save fuel. Your hats and switches here. There's two cup holders. I like that this does have black piano trim, but it will leave fingerprints over time. So if you guys have OCD, you want to basically keep this thing wiped down. Looking at the dashboard, it's going to be a nice leather material with some stitching here. I do like the two-tone color combination that my tester has. Looking at the glove compartment here is damped, but it's not lined with felt. It's a pretty decent sized glove box. You can put a lot of stuff in there. Looking at the seats here, they're they're nice. They're not aggressively they're not aggressively bolstered, but they're really supportive and comfortable. There's also this armrest here, so if you're on a long road trip, you want to rest your elbows, you can definitely do so. Looking up top, there's going to be the standard sunroof. Honda does not offer a panoramic sunroof on the Pilot. Maybe for the next generation, a Pilot they might offer that. Looking up here is going to be a sunglass holder. Also, there's this convex mirror here so you can spy on your second and third row passengers. It's going to be incandescent lighting throughout the cabin. You can also open up the standard uh, sunroof there by using these controls up here. There's this frameless uh, type mirror there. Also, with the three car garage uh, remote buttons there. Uh, down here is going to be additional storage, of course. There's also a aux with another 12 volt. And there it does offer a decent amount of storage. And you guys are wondering what these are. These are for the these are the headphones for the rear seat entertainment. Uh, so Honda does throw those in there as well. I like this uh, texture here. But overall, I'm impressed with the pilot's interior. But let's hop into the second row. So I'm sitting in the second row here of the Honda Pilot here. Looking at the legroom, Honda says you get a 38.4 inch legroom. I have plenty of foot space underneath the driver's seat. This is where I have the seat to drive. I'm only five foot eight. There's gonna be two map pockets back here for storage. Honda does throw in your own set of climate controls back here with the two air vents. There's three level heated seats. So my tester is the touring grade trim. There's also your headphone jack down there with the household outlet. There's two USB ports over here with an HDMI port. My tester does have a rear seat entertainment. It does have uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify. I showed you guys this system in the Honda Odyssey review that I did a few months ago. You can also uh, navigate through that. Unfortunately, it's not an actual touch screen. You have to use the remote control right here. And Honda does throw in two sets of batteries. So you can navigate through this uh, rear seat entertainment. If you guys want to see that, you can just uh, basically fold it up. Your lights live up top, of course. I'm shutting the door here of the Honda Pilot. Honda does throw in manual sunshades to block out additional light. There's going to be two cup holders here in the door, also with additional storage. Nice grab handle here, and it's going to be slightly padded there. Uh, you can also recline the seat just a little bit. You can't recline it too much, but you can also have it upright if you would like. Pulling the armrest down here. Honda does throw in two cup holders, but if you're looking for storage, they do give you the mat pockets also with some storage here on the actual door panel. I'm only five foot eight, have plenty of headroom here in the Pilot, but let's hop into the third row of the Honda Pilot. So to get into the third row here, Honda makes it pretty simple. They put the release button here on back of the second row. You guys press that, you guys can see the seat will slide forward a little bit. Just push it a little bit more to reveal some nice aisle space to get into the third row here. But getting back here, I'm only five foot eight. You guys know how tall I am by now. Uh, sitting on this side of the vehicle, my knees are not touching the seat back here of the second row. I have plenty of foot space underneath uh, the second row here. Honda says you get around 31.9 inches of legroom back here. Of course, the lights are going to be up top, but there's no charging ports back here. But there's rear air vents with storage and a cup holder. You get it on this side as well. Uh, I'm only five foot eight. I have plenty of headroom uh, back here in the third row. So if you guys are over six feet tall, you guys can probably sit back here, but I know your knees might touch the seat back here of the second row. The hood open here for the 2021 Honda Pilot. Let's see what powers the Pilot here. This has the company's 
3.5 liter V6. It makes 280 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. It's paired with a nine speed automatic transmission. And as the pilot sits here, it weighs in around 4,100 pounds. If you guys equip this thing with all wheel drive, it's gonna weigh 4,300 pounds. Fuel economy is rated at 20 in the city, 27 on the highway and 23 combined. With adding all wheel drive, is gonna be $2,000 extra, but that will increase the towing rating from 3,500 pounds to 5,000 pounds. So starting off in the 2021 Honda Pilot Touring, a tester has the company's 3.5 liter V6. It makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque and it's paired with a nine speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy really quick is right at 20 in the city, 27 on the highway and 23 combined. So the Pilot does get really good fuel economy for the front wheel drive model. And all wheel drive is gonna be $2,000 extra, but it does uh, basically upgrade the towing rating from 3,500 3, pounds to 5,000 pounds. So if you guys like to tow, I would highly recommend going for the all wheel drive system here. But the steering is not bad here in the Pilot. There is some bite roll when you attack some uh, back roads. Like here, I just went on a little twisty road. The car did have some bite lean, but it's not enough to basically scare you. But the Pilot does ride rides extremely smooth it goes over the bumps just fine the suspension uh, basically sucks up the bumps uh, as you go over them like here in Miami we don't have the best roads like I told you guys from previous reviews but the Pilot is a really good uh, family hauler this thing has standard three rows of seating you don't have to pay any extra charge because Honda gets you to a standard equipment it does have Honda sensing which includes a uh, lane keeping assist lane departure uh, mercy braking with four collision warning with blind spot monitoring with adaptive cruise control so it does come standard with honda's driver's assistance which is really good driver's assistance i do like that honda offers it as standard equipment some competitors will charge you for like adaptive cruise control some other competitors will charge you like i mentioned but honda just gives you through as standard equipment that 3.5 liter v6 is really responsive it's sporty i like the way that it uh, basically feels like i mentioned it makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque but this thing is not a speed dim you're not going to take your pilot on the track you're going to basically take this thing on the highway and get the best uh, fuel economy as possible but i'm really surprised that honda does not offer a plug-in hybrid of the pilot or any electric five model here of the pilot maybe in the next generation of pilot they might offer that hopefully they do same thing with the odyssey i know toyota has the toyota sienna but that thing is really sluggish because it only makes 245 horsepower but it does have a hybrid powertrain, but I wish Honda would offer that for the Odyssey. Yes, I know this is not an Odyssey review, but basically this thing does share the same uh, powertrain with the Odyssey, but I wish Honda would offer just a little bit more in their portfolio with the powertrain options. This thing gets really good cargo. If you fold down all the seats, Honda says you get 83.9 uh, cubic feet of space. Open this thing into a sport mode here. You just press the a drive selector that says uh, D here and just put your foot to the floor. The 3.5 liter V6 does have a nice uh, growl to it. It does sound really sporty. Um, like I mentioned, you're not going to be attacking back roads here in your uh, pilot because this thing is a three row uh, family hauler here. But if you guys are planning to do so, it is going to have a lot of body roll. But putting my foot down here a little bit. The V6 pound, it sounds really good, just like from the Odyssey that I tested. Um, but the Odyssey has a 10-speed automatic. This has a 9-speed automatic. And Honda does throw in paddle shifters here. And they're really responsive. And this thing likes to rev out, honestly. I'm not going to lie to you. The V6 here likes to, like, basically it likes to get revved out. Uh, the paddle shifters are responsive. They're plastic. I, I do like the way that they feel. The seats in here, they feel comfortable. Like I mentioned, this suspension sucks up all the bumps here, all the imperfections in the road. So this is really a great daily driver, of course. You're gonna buy this to fit your family. Like I mentioned, it does offer three row of seating. So the ride quality here is fantastic. Um, like I mentioned, the driver's assistance is really good. Of course, it's Honda. They have really good driver's assistance. Like I mentioned, the paddle shifters are really responsive. But most people are not going to drive this thing in sport mode like that. You can keep this thing in drive or keep it in eco mode and try to get really good fuel economy, of course. 
but the ride quality here is really good. The cabin is quiet, of course. You can keep your kids sleep. So just in case you wanted to punch or put your foot to the floor here on this V6, the cabin is still going to be quiet. But the seats in here, they're supportive. Honda does throw in this armrest here. So you want to rest your elbows on a long road trip, you can definitely do so. And they do play a nice part here, as you guys can see. I'm basically resting my elbows here, even on this quick little drive here. Uh, like I mentioned, starting feel, it's numb, of course. It's a three row family hauler. You're not gonna be basically, uh, it's not a speed demon, basically. You're not gonna be taking this thing to the track or anything like that. So it does have adequate uh, power um, as well. But Honda did a really good job here with the Pilot. The Pilot is one of my favorite uh, three row SUVs in this segment. This segment is full of three row SUVs. You have the Honda, I mean, you have the Toyota uh, Highlander, you have the Volkswagen Atlas, which is a three row as well. So you have plenty of other choices. But you're looking for reliability and durability, I would have to give it to the Honda and the Toyota. If you're looking to basically keep this thing for a long period of time without basically doing any hard maintenance to it because this car will basically take care of itself. So after spending time with the 2021 Honda Pilot Touring, if you're looking for a three-wheel SUV that's practical and also reliable, the Honda Pilot has your name all over. So I'm going to say Pilot Cost. Starting price here for my testers at $42,000. $920. The Pilot does have some options on it, which includes the paint, which is $395, and also destination, which is around $1,100. The Pilot here stickers for $44,435. I would like to give a special thanks to South Motors Honda for providing with the 2021 Honda Pilot. If you're in the market for a Honda Pilot, you can come to South Motors Honda and ask for Nelson. He'll get you into a new use or pre-owned vehicle. Hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2021 Honda Pilot Touring. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at Drive One Reviews, and please keep subscribing to my YouTube channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video.